Shalom. First off and foremost, I want to give all honor, glory, and praises to the one and only true living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah Mashiach, who the world calls Jesus Christ. And the title of today's video is going to be titled, Receive Counsel and Instruction. Right? In these last days, we have to receive counsel and instruction. Right? We can't be hard-headed, stiff-hearted, right, and rebellious against, you know, the Most High God. We got to receive the counsel and instruction from those who the Lord has set up out here in the last days to guide us and lead us in the ways of righteousness, right? Receive counsel from those who are wiser than, than, than we are, right? Um, pertaining to certain matters, right? Certain situations um, that we may um, receive proper guidance, right? And know what we should do um, in certain situations that we may be dealing with, right? Or in general, just in life. Right. Also, me, we know that the men that the Lord has set up out here, right, we're receiving counsel from the Most High God through them. Because if you're dealing with a righteous man, he's going to go through the precepts, right? He's not going to speak from the belly of his own mind and tell you what he feels, right? But he's going to go through the proper precepts and guide you according to the ways of the Most High God, right? And instruct you according to the ways of righteousness, according to the ways of the, of the Heavenly Father, right? Because you got to understand, like, you know, we. There may be brothers out there that, be, that, and there is brothers out there that may be more experienced than you, more knowledgeable in, um, um, than you on how to deal with certain matters, right? Whatever they may be, right? So we got to take heed to those things. And the scriptures tell us that, right? We got to receive counsel from the elders, right? Those who are wise in the scriptures, right? Those who go through the precepts. Don't go and receive counsel and instruction from somebody who's going to tell you something out of their own mind and not pull one precept. You can't go receive counsel from somebody that's in the world, right? Somebody that doesn't know the most high. Somebody that's not following the law, statutes, and commandments. You want to take heed and receive counsel and instruction from those who are godly, right? Who, who you know that keeps the commandments of, of the Lord, right? So that you have a better chance at salvation, right? You have a better chance at saving your soul and not just yours, but also those around you, right? Right? Um, a lot of people, you know, in these last days, they tend to want to listen to their own heart, right? Their own mind, right? But we can't do that, right? They say, well, nobody can tell me nothing, right? You can't instruct me. I'm a grown man, right? I don't need your counsel, right? I know what to do, whatever the case may be. But look, those ways are going to lead you into destruction, right? That's being pride, uh, so like you're, uh, uh, having pride and being very uh, proudful, and the Lord don't deal with that. That's one of the six things right out of the seven that the lord hates in proverbs 6 and verse 16 right you can read about that right so we can't do that you know we can't be listening to our own minds but rather we should receive counsel and instruction from the heavenly father right what comes with what reading studying right praying right fasting right and then and then those so like ultimately the counsel is coming from the lord but then if you're in amongst the congregation right you ultimately want to receive you know speak to the lord right pray to the lord Right, and then you go to the elders or those men who the Lord has set up, whatever congregation you may be in, so that it can guide you and lead you in the ways of righteousness according to the Heavenly Father, according to these laws, statutes, commandments, according to the precepts in the Bible, right? But not according to some man's mind and something that he feels in his personal opinion, because that doesn't even matter. If a brother's not coming out the scriptures with it, or a sister's not coming out the scriptures with it, hey, it really don't matter, right? Don't take heed to somebody that's going to be just talking out of, out of their own belly. Right? Again, let me get the book of um let me get Proverbs 14 and 12 real quick, right? For those who think, you know, you don't gotta listen to nobody, you know, you just you know you do what you want, you know, you're a grown man, you're a grown, you're a grown lady, whatever the case may be. Nobody can instruct you, right? But let's see what the Lord says about that. Right? This is the book of Proverbs 14 and verse 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, right? So there's a way that may seem right unto you, right? You don't want to receive counsel and instruction from nobody, but you want to be wise in your own eyes. Do what you feel is right. Right? Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Right? So your own mind, your own counsel and instruction that you receive from yourself can cause you to be destroyed. Right? Because you're not taking heed to the commandments and the order and the instruction and the counsel of the Heavenly Father. Right? And that can lead you to being, you know, put to death. Right, so you want to be wise in this thing, right? Don't be, don't be a powerful person and saying, "Well, you know, I'm 30 years old. Nobody, you can't tell me nothing." 
right? Where the Lord is going to deal with you, right? Sirach chapter 5 and verse 2. And it reads, Follow not thy own mind and thy strength to walk in the ways of thy heart, right? So the Lord clearly tells us, don't follow after the ways of your heart, right? Don't follow after your own mind, right? Because it's going to lead you to be destroyed at the end of the day, right? And we want to come back to the Lord, right? The Lord told us in the book of Jeremiah, let's get it. 17 and verse 10. Why did the Lord tell us not to follow after the ways of our own mind? Right? Let's find out. Jeremiah 17 and 9. The heart is deceitful above all things. Right? The heart is deceitful. Right? When you look at that word deceitful, it means untrustful. Right? Our minds are untrustful. You can't even trust your own mind. And the Lord is going to tell us why. Meaning our minds are what? Misleading. Right? Untruthful. Right? Your minds will play trick on you. Right? That's what they say in the world. My mind's playing tricks on me, right? And that's what actually happens in real life. Your, your mind will play a trick on you and have you thinking that your own counsel and instruction that you gave yourself is right, but it's actually wrong and it'll lead you to be destroyed, right? The Lord said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked, right? The mind is desperately wicked. When you look at that word desperately, right? It means dangerously wicked, right? It's desperately wicked, right? A lot of times when we follow... Um, our minds, right? Most of the time when we follow our, our own minds and decide to follow our own hearts, right? We end up in jail, right? We end up in prison, right? Uh, we end up dead, right? We end up poor, right? We end up a lot of different things. We end up with diseases, right? We end up destroyed at the end of the day, right? So we got to come up out of that, right? We can't be dealing with that. The Lord ain't dealing with people that's following after their own minds, right? We end up in serious situations that we can't get out of sometimes, Right, and that, and that's a scary thing, right? That all those those certain situations that you know that you that you got in because you followed your own mind, it, it ends up being a bad outcome at the end of the day, right? We end up ultimately we end up in slavery and in captivity, right? Even to this very day, right? By us following our own minds, right, and doing what we thought was right but was actually wrong, and we didn't want to follow the set order, the divine order that the Lord set up. Right when the Lord said, "Let all things be done decently and in order," He gave us law, statutes, and commandments to um, instruct our people and to guide our people and to lead us in the way of righteousness and the way that was pleasing unto Him. But we chose rather to, no, we're going to follow our own mind. We're going to do what we feel is right. Nobody can tell us nothing, right? We're going to do what we want to do. What happened to us? We ended up in slavery. Many of them, right? The Babylonian, the Syrian, right? Um, even this captivity that we that we're in right now, right, and many more captivities we was in, right, the Egyptian captivity, right, we was in many captivities, and we're still in captivity this very day here in America. Many pe people may say, "Well, that's not so. That's not true." How not? Right? Because they say, "What? Well, I got a job, or, you know, I got a car. I can go and come as I please. I could do whatever it is that I want, right? Anytime I want, I could get up any time of the day." And do whatever the hell I want to do, right? But your mind is destroyed, right? You think that you can do whatever you want to do, but you actually can't, right? It's the book of Baruch 3 and 8. And it reads, Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity, right? I'm going to let God be true and every man a liar, right? The Lord said we're still in our captivity to this very day, right? Where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse, Right, so we still in, in we still in um, yet this day in our captivity in the place where the Lord scattered us. Right, we came to America in our captivity. Right, we still here in America. We never went back to our homeland, and a lot of our people so destroyed that they don't even know what their homeland is. They don't even know that we're the real Jews according to the Bible. Right, and that we that we actually um, come from Jerusalem. Right, and we're the real Jews according to the Bible. Right? You so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Right? We're the true Hebrew Israelites, the true Jews according to the Holy Scriptures. Right? And you can also go through history and it teaches you the same thing. Right? We know these things and it's an actual fact. And all these other nations know it. Right? That's why they love to keep us in sin. That's why they'll pay, pay you millions of dollars right, to go uh, uh, sing a rap song talking about killing your brothers. Right? Because they know that that's hatred towards your people according to the Holy Scripture. You can't make it into the kingdom of heaven if you do so. Right? If you misleading and misguiding your people, the Lord knows that you can't make it into the kingdom of heaven. Right? It's like if they know you can't make it to the kingdom of heaven. That's why they'll pay sisters millions of dollars, right, to twerk on stage, right, to get all the, all of our people to, to, to go off into sin. 
like to create these commercials eating pork and bacon and all that to have you go buy those things so that you could be destroyed right it says behold we are yet this day in our captivity where thou hast scattered us for a reproach and a curse and to be subject to payments right we're still subject to payments right it's modern day slavery just because you got a job and you can go do what you, whatever you feel you can do and you're still in captivity you're still subject to payments you still got to pay that cell phone bill you still got to pay that uh, for groceries you still got to pay that rent if you got on the house you still got to pay mortgage you still got to pay taxes right whatever the case may be you're still subject unto payments it's called modern day slavery right they no longer have the yoke and irons upon our necks they took it off because our people's destroyed already right and we can prove that let's get jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 4 and it reads and even thou it's like and thou even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that i gave thee um and i will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not right so because we didn't want to take heed we didn't want to receive counsel and instruction right the lord caused us to discontinue from our heritage right and you can read about that in the book of sirach 17 11 sirach uh 24 and verse 23 right our heritage is these law statutes and law statutes and commandments that the Lord has given unto us that we gotta follow after. But the Lord caused us to discontinue from that because we chose to walk after our own mind. The Lord said, Okay, you don't want to keep my law statute and commandments, you don't want to follow the order and the instruction and counsel I gave you. All right, I'm gonna let you follow your own mind and let's see where it gets you. Right? We end up where? In captivity. And now what what happens for us doing that? It says, and thou um, even thyself shall discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee and I will cause thee to serve thy enemies and the land which thou knowest not right because when we came to America we didn't know this land right we was from Jerusalem right and we fled if you know the history right in 70 AD right when the Romans came down to persecute all the Jews right our people fled into the west coast of Africa right and many other places right we fled into the west coast of Africa and from there you have the Africans right the Hamites um, uh, sell us into the uh, in the in, in the Arabs, right? Sell us into the so-called white man. They brought us over here to the Americas, right? So we're we're in the, we're in the land that we didn't know, right? And what happened while we were here? It says, in the land that is like, it's like he said, I will cause you to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in my anger which shall burn forever, right? So the Lord caused us to serve our enemies. Let's get the book of Deuteronomy twenty-eight and verse uh, forty-seven. And it reads, because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness, with gladness of heart, for the abundance of all things. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee. Right? So now we got to serve our enemies in this place um, that the Lord sent us. Right? Um, in hunger. Right? And in thirst. And in nakedness. Right? So when you're hungry, you got to serve your enemies. Right? You got to go to your enemy, to their grocery stores, their fast food chains, their restaurants. Right, and if our people do own any of these things, guess what? You still got to pay taxes, which we just read in Baruch three and eight. Right, you're subject to payments. You still got to buy the products. If you got a restaurant, you got to go buy meat. You got to go buy these different products that to sell, and you're getting them from your enemies. And then you got to pay taxes on that restaurant at the end of the day. Right, and uh, it says in thirst. Right, whether you own a bar, whether you 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 know you want water, right? You thirsty, whatever the case may be. And if you do own any of one of these establishments, you still got to go. Um, sub, you're still subject to payments, so like you, right? You still got to pay, right? It says, and in um, nakedness, right? When you want some clothes, you want those new Jordans, right? You want them new uh, Ben Davis, right? Those five hundred ones, right? Them Dickies, right? That 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 Gucci, that Louis Vuitton, right? Whatever the case may be, guess what? You got to go get it from your enemies. And if you do own one of these clothing stores, right? Because many of our people do, right? They, they may own some clothing brands, whatever the case may be. Guess what? Where you get your fabrics from? You got to go buy from your enemies, right? And guess what? You still got to pay taxes on that uh, clothing store, right? You're still subject to payments. It's modern day slavery, right? Reading on. It says, um, and in one of all things, right? So you got to serve your enemies in one of all things. When you want to travel, you need a passport, right? Whatever the case may be. And one of all things, you got to go to your enemies to get it. It says, And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, 
right? Because we know we had a yoke of iron upon our neck. If you know the history and the things that happened to our people during slavery, right? We literally had yokes of iron upon our necks. We was chained and shackled up, right? It says until he have destroyed thee, right? But now he destroyed us. So now we don't need that chain upon our neck, right? Because we're so destroyed, we don't know who we are, right? And we think we're free in the land that we're still captives, right? As I gave the analogy in another video I did, which I don't like to use, but I'm gonna have to, right? It's like having a dog. When you first get a dog, it's wild, right? It's running around, right? Tearing things up, biting up things, whatever the case may be, right? You gotta train that dog. You gotta put him on a leash, right? You can't walk that dog you just got down the street without a chain on, guess what? It's gonna run around. It's gonna run through the street, right? It's gonna do whatever it wants to do. But when you put that, that, that chain upon his neck, right? And you train that dog up, then you're able to take that chain off that dog's neck. And guess what? He'll obey your every command. He won't leave your side. The same way that these other nations did unto our people. Same way uh, Esau, the so-called white man, did it to our people. Now we're so destroyed, we don't know who we are. We think we black. We think we Mexican. You know, we think we all these different bywords, you know, or whatever the case may be. And we think we're free in the land that we're still captive, not understanding that you just been trained up that way. Right? So you got to repent and come up out of that. Right? And receive counsel of the Lord and stop following up the ways of your own heart. Because it's going to get you destroyed. Right? Let's get Matthew 15 and verse 8. Salakia. Look at Matthew 15 and verse 8. And it reads. That's uh, Salakia. Matthew 15 and 18. Salakia. And it reads. But those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart. And they defile the man, right? So we're going to read some of the things that come from within the heart, meaning your mind, right? Because a lot of people, they like to follow their own minds. So let's see why the Lord said our minds was desperately wicked and not to follow after, right? Why we got to receive counsel of the Lord and from those who the Lord set up um, to guide us and lead us, right? As watchmen. Verse 19. For out of the heart, meaning your mind, proceed evil thoughts continually, right? Out of our hearts proceed evil thoughts, right? You could be sitting and all of a sudden your mind just telling you to do wicked things. Your mind say, hey, go beat him up. Hey, go rob that. Hey, go steal over here. Hey, go kill him. Hey, go sleep with that brother's wife. Whatever the case may be, your mind's constantly running and it's constantly giving you wicked thoughts. That's why the Lord said meditate in his word day and night so that you can combat those thoughts that come upon you, right? It says, for out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, blasphemies. These are the things which defile a man. You see that? And these things that come from within in our heart, they defile you as a man or a sister, right? A lot of people think the only way you could be defiled is by eating unclean food, right? Uh, uh, you know, doing drugs, whatever the case may be. Yeah, those things defile you, but it's also the things that, that's within your mind that defile you as well, right? Let's get another precept on that. Mark 7 and 20. And he said, that which cometh out of man, that defileth the man. From within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornication, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within and defile a man, right? These things come from within your heart and they defile you, right? And we know that's a sin according to the Bible, right? When you got foolish thoughts, wicked thoughts, those things devalue you as a man or a sister, right? And we can prove that. Let's get Proverbs uh, 24 and verse 9. And it reads, The thought of foolishness is sin, and the scorner is abomination to man. So the thought of foolishness, that's a sin. And we know that sin brings forth death, right? Um, from there, let's get the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 because we know that if you're defiled right if your temple your body is defiled what happens the lord has to destroy that temple right because he doesn't he can't he can't dwell within it right wisdom cannot dwell in a, in a, in a temple that's that's wicked right this is first corinthians chapter 3 and verse 16 it says know ye not that ye are the temple of god right because when you read Acts 7 and 48 the lord doesn't deal it's like you dwell in temples made with hands Right? What is a temple made with hands? Your, 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 your churches that you have. The Lord's not in that church. Right? The Lord says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God. We are now the temple. Right? It says, And that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. 
If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. You see that? The temple of God is holy, which temple you are. And if you destroy, it's like if you defile that temple, right? The Lord will have to uh, destroy that temple, right? Because he can't dwell within that temple, right? He can't allow his Holy Spirit to dwell within that temple because it's defiled, right? This is Wisdom of Solomon, chapter... Uh, one and verse four for into a malicious soul wisdom shall not enter a malicious means like a wicked soul wisdom shall not enter nor, nor dwell in the body that is subject to sin you see that verse five for the holy spirit of discipline will flee deceit and remove from thoughts that are without understanding and will not abide when unrighteousness cometh in you see that so the lord can't dwell in a body that's subject to sin a body, a mind that's constantly wicked that says, I don't need to receive the counsel of the Lord. I do what I want to do. Hey, I do what I want to do. I walk after the ways of my own heart. When the Lord said, hey, don't do it. Now you're going against the Lord and you're doing things contrary to what he told you to do. Right? Let's get Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 5. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not to thy own understanding. Right? You can't lean into your own understanding. You got to trust in the Lord Receive his counsel and instruction because the Lord's not going to mislead you, right? He's not going to misguide you, right? The Lord's going to give you proper counsel to lead you in the way of righteousness that you may receive salvation and be saved, Lord willing, in these last days, right? It says, verse 6, in all thy ways acknowledge him. So in all your ways, you got to acknowledge the Heavenly Father. Not in all your ways acknowledge the ways of your own heart and get destroyed. We just read many precepts that told you that you're going to be destroyed for that, right? The ways that may seem right to you. Hey, it's going to lead you into destruction. It says, and he will direct thy paths, and the Lord will direct our paths, right? We got to just receive his counsel and walk after him and do things that is right and righteous in his eyes, right? Let's get Proverbs chapter uh, 3 and verse 7. It says, be not wise in thy own eyes. Like, don't be wise in your own eyes. Thinking you know everything. Thinking that you, you, you don't got to hearken it to a brother because he may be younger than you, but he's more knowledgeable than you in the scripture, right? He's more wiser than you according to the Holy Bible in the eyes of the Heavenly Father, right? But you may feel, well, this guy's young. I don't got to listen to him. He don't know what he's talking about, right? But not understanding that the Lord set that brother up to guide you and lead you and give you proper counsel, whether he be young or whether he be old, whatever the case may be. Ultimately, it's the Lord speaking through that man, right? Or that sister. You got to take heed if they're coming out the Holy Scriptures and it's in righteousness and they looking out for your soul that you don't be destroyed because that's love, right? Let's get Sirach 19 and 22. Look at Sirach. Chapter 19 and verse 22. And it reads, The knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom, right? Because a lot of people, they want to follow, you know, after wickedness. You know, their minds, and they think that they got knowledge, right? They think they smart. They think they, you know, um, they got wisdom, right? But they, they may have, but it's on the left-hand side. It's not wisdom pertaining to the Holy Scriptures. It's not the wisdom that the Lord has given to a man or to a sister, right? So let's see what the Lord says. He says, the knowledge of wickedness is not wisdom, right? Neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence, right? So the knowledge of wickedness, hey, that's not wisdom, you know? Knowing how to steal, how to rob, how to kill, how to make fast money because you're doing wickedness, that's not wisdom, right? Knowing how to hate your people in your heart, that's not wisdom, Knowing how to keep a grudge for, for years and years, that's not wisdom, right? That's wickedness, right? It says, neither at any time the counsel of sinners prudence, right? Neither at any time getting counsel from a sinner, someone who doesn't know the Lord, that's not keeping the law, statute, commandments. It's not wisdom. Why would I go to somebody in the world to seek counsel and instruction on something I'm dealing with, right? They're not going to guide you and lead you. You go to a brother that's in the world and tell him, hey, you know, I'm struggling with pornography, right whatever the case may be you think he's going to guide you and lead you say hey brother you shouldn't be doing that you know that's a sin you know uh the lord you know you want to make it to the kingdom of heaven you may be destroyed for that right because that's a sin he's not going to tell you that he's going to say man we all watch porn what are you talking about that's what men do right and that's going off right they will mislead you and misguide you so you got to be knowledgeable and you got to receive the proper counsel from the lord um ultimately from the lord and from the men that the lord has set up in these last days to guide you and lead you in the ways of righteousness according to the holy scriptures right again right james chapter 3 and verse 15 and it reads 
this wisdom descended not from above, right? So the wisdom of wickedness, the wisdom of the world, it don't descend from above. It don't descend from the heavenly father coming from the heavenly realm, right? But what it says, but it's earthly, right? These are things that man came up with. That's man's wisdom, right? Didn't Paul say, I speak to you not with man's wisdom, right? But he speak, he's speaking through the wisdom that the Lord gave him, right? It says, sensual, devilish. You see that? These things are devilish and it's earthly and the Lord's not dealing with that wisdom on the left-hand side. You know, we got to understand that, right? The wisdom that you think that you have and you feel like you don't got to receive counsel and instruction from nobody, it's going to get you destroyed because it's not wisdom from above. 1 Corinthians 3 and then verse 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to uh, be good, so like if any man, I'm going to read it again slow, so like 1 Corinthians 3 and 18. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. So the wisdom of this world is foolishness in the eyes of the heavenly father. The Lord's not dealing with that. You got to deal with the Lord's wisdom. You know? Let's get uh, Proverbs uh, 14 and 12 again. Right? Which we got earlier, but I'm going to bring it back out. Because this wisdom of this world is going to get you destroyed. Right? The counsel and instruction of this world will get you destroyed. Right? You know, and there's many examples of that. Right? In the scriptures, the Lord said, look, once you once you lay down with a woman, that's your wife. And the Lord hated divorce. Right? He hated when someone separates from their wife. Right? Or a woman leaves her husband. The Lord ain't dealing with that. Except it be for fornication. But here... The wisdom of this world say, look, you could you could divorce your wife for any little thing, right? You could go to the court, get a divorce, and then you go your way, you go your way. Now understand it because you know you got wisdom of the heavenly father that once you do that, and you go your way and you go your way, and you go meet somebody else and you go lay with somebody else, that's adultery. And that's a sin worthy of death. That's not wisdom. This world will get you destroyed. Right? Uh, and, and this world will tell you. You know, now that they legalize marijuana, they say, uh, you know, smoke, you know, smoking weed is healthy for you, whatever the case may be. But when you read the scriptures, the Lord said, don't smoke. He said, that defiles your temple. And you'll be destroyed for that. Like the Lord said, eat the herbs. Right. But yet you got people smoking the herbs because the world tells them to do it. That's not wisdom. Right. And there's many other examples of it. Right. You just got to be wise and take heed to the, to the Lord and to the men that the Lord has set up to guide you. Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man. Again, your way may seem right unto you. Your instruction, your counsel may seem right unto you. The instruction and counsel you got from somebody else in the world may seem right unto you. Right? But the end thereof are the ways of death. But that's going to lead you to death and destruction. You know, we don't want that. You know, we want our people to repent. Come back. Keep the law, statute, commandments. Right? Get in order. Right? The Lord deals with order. Right, if you insubordinate in the in the, in the in the army, right? If you go to Esau's army, so-called white man's army, again, whether the Marines or the Navy, and they give you a command, they got lieutenants, sergeants, right? Whatever the case may be, right? Officers, and they and they and they give you order, right? They tell you what to do, what not to do. They give you a command. I need you to do this, and you say, "Well, I ain't doing that. I'm gonna do what I want to do. I'm gonna do what my mind tells me to do, my own heart." That's what they're gonna tell you. You're insubordinate. You got to go. Get them out of here. The same way as it is with the Lord. Because we're supposed to be soldiers in the in the army of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Right? And if you're insubordinate in that, the Lord will kick you out. Right? This is 2 Timothy 2 and verse 3. Thou, therefore, endure hardness as a good soldier of Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Right? We got to be good soldiers of Christ. Right? In, uh, in Exodus 15, 3, the Lord said, I'm a man of war. Right? So, we are in the Lord's army. But if you're insubordinate, you don't want to follow a direction and receive instruction and counsel, and the Lord will kick you out, right? And when the Lord kicked you out, it ain't going to be like when Esau kicked you out. He just kicks you out and you go about your business. You do your own thing. And the Lord can do that too, but he can destroy you. He can kill you. He can bug out your mind. He can have you going off out here, right? So don't play with the Lord, right? Sirach 3 and verse 24. For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, right? When you follow after your own heart, which we got plenty of precepts on, it's going to mislead you, right? And many people are deceived by their own vain opinion, right? And that word vain means worthless, right? Your opinion don't mean anything if it's not coming from the Holy Bible, from the Holy Scriptures, 
Nobody's dealing with another man's opinion, right? That's like science, and we don't deal with science, right? We don't deal with science, right? That's another, that's somebody's opinion that may or may not be a fact, right? Most likely not, right? So we're not dealing with opinions out here, right? You gotta, we gotta understand that. This is, um, this is 2 Timothy, right? Chapter 4. So like your 2 Timothy. So like your chapter, was it 4? No, 6. 2 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding prof uh, profane and vain babblings. Right, so we got to keep those things um, which is committed to, to thy trust, meaning what? These laws that you commandments, things that the Lord has guided us and led us with and gave us order to follow after. Avoiding profane and vain babblings, avoiding all this other nonsense, you know, man's wisdom, wisdom on the left hand side, right? You know, our own minds, right? Vain babblings, it says, and oppositions of science, falsely so called. You see that? We gotta, we gotta abstain from those things, right? So, back to what I was going into, Sirach 3 and 24, it says, For many are deceived by their own vain opinion, and an evil suspicion have overthrown their judgment. You see that? You're deceived by your own vain of thing, of opinion, your own wicked thoughts, right? It will overthrow your judgment, right? You won't, you won't be able to properly discern right from wrong, right? Because you're walking after the ways of your heart, and it may seem right unto you, but it's going to get you destroyed again, right? At the end of the day, those thoughts are foolishness, right? Your own vain thoughts is foolishness, right? We got to understand that, right? Let's get the book of Proverbs, chapter 12. In verse 15 and it reads the way of a fool is right in his own eyes right uh, uh, the way of a fool right yeah it may seem right in his own eye, in his own eyes right because he's a foolish man right and everything he comes upon his mind he thinks he's right no you know he can never be wrong he can never be corrected right it says but he that hearkeneth unto counsel is wise but those who hearken unto the counsel of the heavenly father and to, the, to those men who the Lord has out here that's bringing forth the counsel of the Lord through the scriptures, that's a wise man, right? That's a wise person, right? And those are the people you want to be around, right? And that's the type of person you want to be yourself, right? That's the type of brother, that's the type of sister you want to be in these last days. Now, you don't want to be a fool, you know, thinking you're right in your own eyes, right? This is uh, Sirach in an Apocrypha or Ecclesiasticus chapter 37 and verse 14. And it reads, for a man's mind is sometimes want to tell him more than seven watchmen, right? Because your mind is constantly running. Your mind will tell you seven different things, a million different things, right? Just like seven different watchmen, right? It says that sit up, sit above in a high tower. And above all this, so like it, so like it, that's, what, that's all I wanted on that. Um, let's get Sirach 8 and 8. Now your mind will tell you many different things, Right? But that's why we got to receive counsel from the Lord. But the Lord also has men out here in these last days to guide us and lead us that's going to give you counsel according to the Holy Scriptures. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 8, and verse 8. It says, despise not the discourse, meaning a godly conversation, right, of the wise. But acquaint thyself, meaning get familiar with, right, their proverbs, meaning their wise sayings. For of them thou shalt learn instruction. Right for all those wise sayings, right, and all those godly conversations that that you hear, um, you know the elders may be talking about our brothers or sisters, right? You are learning instruction by those things, right? It says, and how to serve great men with ease, right? Verse nine. It reads, miss not the discourse, meaning the godly conversation of the elders, for they also learn of their fathers, and of them thou shalt learn understanding. And to give answer as need requireth, right? So the Lord said, look, don't despise these things, man. You got to listen to those who are wiser than you and receive counsel and instruction from them, right? Because they learned of their fathers who followed after righteousness, followed after the law, statute, commandments, said the heavenly father, right? And we got to do the same thing, right? Let's get on. Um, let's get Sirach 6 and 23. And it reads, Give ear, my son. Receive advice and refuse not my counsel. Because ultimately, right, these, this counsel, even though you may be getting it from an elder or for a brother that's knowledgeable in the scripts, it's ultimately coming from the Lord. So the Lord said, give ear to it. Listen to it. Right? 
Give ear my son, receive my advice and refuse not my counsel, right? We can't refuse the counsel of the Lord. We have to receive his advice. Don't receive your own advice. It's going to get you destroyed, right? Didn't um, Paul do the same thing, right? Paul received counsel from the heavenly father and he, and he wrote epistles unto his people, right? To guide them and to lead them in the way of righteousness, right? This is the book of 1 Peter chapter 3. In verse uh, 14, it's like you. This is First Peter 3 and 14. It's like you. is that what I wanted? Like you real quick. Let me find this precept. Second Second Peter. Second Second Peter chapter 3 and verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace without spot or blemish. Because that's what it's about. We want to be found in peace without spot or blemish in the eyes of the heavenly father. It says, an account that the long suffering of the Lord is salvation, right? Because we gotta, we gotta, we gotta be long suffering, right? We're gonna go through many different things. Right to receive salvation, right? We're gonna go through much trials and tribulations, right? It says, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, right? He received wisdom from the Lord, right? Hath written unto you, right? He written unto us by the wisdom that he received from the heavenly Father, and he gave these things unto us, right? He wrote, he wrote unto us, right? So many times you may see in the scripture where he says, "I, I speak and not the Lord," right? But he's ultimately received that wisdom from the Lord. So it's still coming from the Heavenly Father. Right? So we got to take heed to those things. You can't say, well, it's not a commandment. The Lord didn't, you know, it's not in the law. This is just Paul speaking. We don't got to listen to it. That would be foolish because he's speaking through the wisdom that the Lord gave him to speak unto us. And it's ultimately the counsel of the Heavenly Father. Right? So we got to take heed to those things. Let's get the book of Sirach 32 and 18. Book of Sirach. Chapter 32 and verse 18, and it reads, A man of counsel will be considerate. Right? So if you're a man of counsel, you'll be considerate. Right? But a strange and proud man is not daunted with fear. Even when himself have done without counsel. Right? Because a proud man, hey, he's gonna do what's right in his own eye. He's gonna do, he don't give a damn. Right? And he don't have fear of the things that's gonna come upon him for the things that he followed after without receiving counsel and instruction from somebody that's watched. Verse 19, do nothing without advice. The Lord said, look, don't do anything without advice. And when thou hast once done, repent not. You see that? So you got to receive advice for everything that you do, right? Let's get Sirach 33 and verse 29. And it reads, be not excessive towards any. And without discretion, meaning without wisdom, do nothing. I right? don't do anything without wisdom, without advice first, right? Because it's going to get you destroyed. Right? Don't follow after your own heart. It's going to lead you astray. Right? It's against Iraq 37 and 16. And it reads, Let reason go before every enterprise and counsel before every action. You got to receive counsel before every action. Go speak to the Lord. Go pray on it. Go talk to the elders. Go talk to those who may be knowledgeable in these scriptures so they can guide you and lead you according to the advice and counsel of the Most High God. Right? Verse 15. And above all this, pray to the Most High, and He will direct thy way in truth. Right? So ultimately, you want to, above everything, you want to pray to the Most High, and He will guide your way in truth. Right? We got to take heed to those things. It's the book of Sirach, chapter 37, and verse 7. Right? And on, on, on another fall, you know, you got to use wisdom in, on who you're receiving advice from, right? And counsel from. Because there's a lot, a lot of wicked men out here as well. So you got to pray to the Lord that you have that spiritual discernment and understand what's going on. This is Sirach chapter 37 and verse uh, 1. Every counselor exalted counsel, but there is one that counseled it for himself, right? So you got good counselors that give proper advice according to the scripture of the Heavenly Father, but then you have those who counsel for themselves. Uh, you got those who got um, uh, arterial motives and they, they got other plans right? and they're wicked men, right? And they'll counsel you just so they can benefit from it, right? They'll lead you in a way of counsel that'll guide you astray just so they can benefit. Right, it says, Beware of a counselor and know before what need he hath, 
right? So you got to be aware of certain counselors and understand what need he has, right? You got to be very watchful and understanding them. Is this brother really going to guide me in the way of righteousness or is this brother going to mislead me, right? For he will counsel for himself, lest he cast a lot upon thee and say unto thee, thy way is good. And after he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee, right? Because you may have a brother that go unto a man, but this brother, you know, he's wicked. He may go and receive counsel, but this brother is counseling for himself. A brother may come unto him, right? Or a sister, right? And may say, look, uh, you know, a brother may come and say, you know, my, you know, I'm having a problem with my wife, you know, this, this, and that. You know, what should I do? And a brother may, you know, be counseling for himself because he really likes this brother's wife. And he may say, man, you got to leave that sister. You know, that sister, wicked, right? And then this brother leaves that sister, right? And the next thing you know, you see this same brother that you received counsel from, right? with your wife right or this sister may be going to a brother and receive counsel and say yeah you know i'm having problems at home with my husband you know this this and that she may hey, brother may say yeah that brother wicked you need to be with a godly man right someone who's going to teach you and guide you and lead you just because that brother likes that sister right and if she leaves her husband and now there's, there's nothing but adultery going on so you got to be wise of who you receive counsel from verse nine um, and say unto thee, thy way is good. And afterward, he stand on the other side to see what shall befall thee. Consult not with one that suspected thee, and hide thy counsel from such as envy thee. Neither consult with a woman touching of whom she is jealous, right? Just like a woman wouldn't go receive counsel from another woman that's jealous, right? Because she's going to mislead that sister, right? It says, Neither would they coward in the manners, um, uh, matters of war. You wouldn't go receive counsel from a man that's a coward, that's scared to go to war. Why would I go receive counsel of that man from, about war when he's scared to go to war? It wouldn't even make sense. He wouldn't even know what kind of advice to give me, right? It says, nor would a merchant concerning exchange, right? A merchant is someone who sells things. Why would you go receive counsel from him of, of how to exchange something? He don't want you to exchange nothing. Once he sells it, he wants it to be final. He don't want you to bring that back because now he's losing money, right? It says, nor with a buyer of selling, right? If somebody's buying something, why, why would you go get counsel of him about selling something when he's buying something, right? It says, nor with an envious man, so like a nor with an envious man of, of, of unthankfulness, nor with an unmerciful man touching kindness, nor with a slothful for any work, nor with a hireling for a year of finished work, nor with an idle servant of much business, Parking not unto these in any matter of counsel, right? Why would you go to someone who's idle that doesn't want to do the work, right? And receive counsel of that man pertaining to business. Well, he don't even want to work. It don't make sense, right? So the Lord has given us proper wisdom in the things that we should be doing, right? In the way that we should be walking, right? Let's get the book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 19. Book of Sirach, chapter 8 and verse 19. And it reads... Open not thy heart to every man, lest he, requ lest he requit thee with a shrewd turn, right? So you can't open your heart to every man. You got to be wise on who you go and receive counsel from, right? You can't just go to any and everybody and receive counsel from that brother or sister. Beware and be uh, circumspect, have wisdom, right? And use the sermon of whom you go receive counsel from. Let's get to Iraq 6 and 6. And it reads... Be in peace with many. Nevertheless, have but one counselor of a thousand, right? And when you receive counsel, you want to go receive counsel from a million different people. Right? You have one person that you go and you trust and that you know that fears God and keep the commandments, and you could tell by the uh, by their fruit and the and the way that they walk and their and their deeds and the way they carry themselves. Receive counsel from that man or that sister, one person. You don't want to go receive counsel from many different people because they all gonna give you different advice. Right, they all gonna give you different counsel pertaining to the matter of, or situation that you're dealing with. You want to make sure you go into somebody who fears the Lord and knows what the Lord requires and what He does not require. Right, and that's highly important. Right, let's get the Book of Proverbs, chapter eleven and verse fourteen, and it reads, "Where no counsel is, the people fall." Right, where there's no counsel, people fall. Right, because it's all chaos. Right. It says, but in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. But when you have multitude of counselors, like we have here in Israel amongst the 12 tribes, amongst all the people that's waking up, there's many different congregations, right? And there's counselors set up within those congregations that you can go and seek counsel from, 
right? There is safety in those things because you're not going to go and do things according to your own mind and get destroyed or get misled by somebody in the world, right? But you'll be guided by, the, by ultimately by the Heavenly Father and by the man that the Lord set up in these last days, right? We got to receive instruction in these last days, right? Let's get Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and 11. It's important to receive instruction, right? No matter how old you are, right? Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 11. Wherefore, set your affection uh, upon my words, Desire them and you shall be instructed, right? So we got to set our affections upon the words of the Lord, right? And be uh, and, and desire them and we shall be instructed, right? And guided in the way that we should walk, All right? Let's get Proverbs 8 and 32. And it reads, Now therefore, hearken unto me, O ye children, O ye children, for blessed are they that keep, keep my ways. Hear instruction and be wise and refuse it not. Blessed is the man that, hark, that, that heareth me, watching daily at my gates and waiting at the post of my doors. For whoso findeth me, findeth life and shall obtain favor of the Lord. But he that sinneth against me wrongeth his own soul. All they that hate me love death. Right? So you got to receive instruction of the Lord. Bro. He said, all those who hate instruction love death. Right? So we got to come up out of that way, man. We got we to gotta do the things that's pleasing in the eyes of the Most High God. Let's get Wisdom of Solomon 6 and 25. And it reads, Receive therefore instruction through my words. That's how you receive instruction, through the words of the Lord. That means you got to read. Right? Revelation 1 and 3. Right? We got to constantly read. The Lord said, Blessed is he who read it. Right? It says, and it, shall do, and it shall do you good. Right? The words will do you good. These holy Bible, these law statute commandments within this Bible, right? We got to follow and we got to walk after this thing, man. Huh? You know, and it's important. You know, it may be hard. It's a battle every day. It's a struggle, right? Because constantly, every day you wake up, there's going to be wicked thoughts coming to your mind, right? But you got to go through the words and precepts to cut those things up because the word of the Lord is sharper than two edged sword, right? Receive counsel. Call brothers up, right? Whoever it is that you trust and you know that's godly, call that brother and receive counsel, advice, right? precepts whatever the case may be yeah it's a battle right the lord said if you my son if you come serve the lord pre prepare yourself for temptation right so you're going to be tempted in many different things right but you got to overcome those things by the word you know nobody said it's going to be easy right but the lord gave us a way up out of that and you can read that in first corinthians 10 and verse 10 he said with that same temptation i make a way to escape right so there's no excuse you know it's a battle the thoughts are going to be there because we're in a fleshly body but just not don't follow after those things, right? And receive counsel so you can grow and get stronger in the spirit, right? Let's get Proverbs 12 and verse 1. Look at Proverbs 12 and verse 1, and it reads, Whoso loveth instruction, loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish, right? So if you love instruction, man, you're going to love knowledge. And we're talking about knowledge of the Most High God. We're not talking about getting a damn AA, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree of the world. We, do, we already know the wisdom of the world is foolishness. We're talking about knowledge of these holy scriptures. Right? Um, let's get the book of Sirach 6 and 18. Let's get the book of Sirach chapter 6 and verse 18. My son, gather instruction from thy youth up. So as you're growing up from a young buck to a grown man, even those who may be, you know, older coming into this troop, you're still like a newborn baby coming into this thing. So you got to gather that, that instruction from your youth up, right? Don't forsake it. So shall thy find wisdom to thine old age. And when you grow old, man, you'll have wisdom. You'll be a very wise and knowledgeable uh, brother or sister, and you'll be able to guide and lead your nations in the way of righteousness, right? And we see that, you know, we got a lot of wise brothers and sisters within this troop. We also see the opposite of that. You also see a lot of a, a, a lot of foolish, right, and, and so-called wise people on the left-hand side, right? When you go through the neighborhood, right, you see 50, 60, 70-year-old men, right, still sagging their pants, still on the block, gang-banging, right, whatever the case may be. That's wickedness. I can't go receive advice from that brother, right? So we got to use wisdom in the eyes of the Heavenly Father. And then when we grow up in age, we'll have much wisdom of the Lord, not of the world. Right? Let's get uh, 2 Timothy 3 and 16. Right? 
2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, it says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God, right? So all these scriptures is given by the inspiration of the heavenly father. And it's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, meaning correction, right? Um, for instruction, um, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may uh, be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works, right? So this, this scriptures, man, is good for instruction, for doctrine, for, 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 for righteousness, for correction, right? All these things, right? Let's get, um, let's get, um, Psalms 8 and verse 11. Let's get Psalms 8 and 11. Salakia. Salaki. I'm gonna get um let's get Joshua chapter one. I mean Joshua chapter six, right? Let's get a few examples, right? Of those who didn't re who didn't listen to the instruction of the Heavenly Father and let's see what was the outcome of it. Let's see what the outcome was of those who didn't want to receive counsel of the Lord. Right? Let's get Joshua chapter six. Joshua chapter 6. So lock it real quick. Right? Let's get Joshua chapter 6. In verse 1. And it reads, Now, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of Baylor. And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. And thou shalt do six days. So like thus shalt thou do six days. And seven priests shall bear um, before the ark seven trumpets of ram's horn. And the seven day ye shall come past the city seven times. And the priest shall blow with the trumpets. Right? So the Lord told Joshua, look, I'm going to give you know, Jericho over into your hands, right? And you go over and overtake it. Let's drop down to verse 16. And it came to pass when the set, um, and it came to pass at the seventh time, right? So when the Lord told these men, he said, look, can pass the city of Jericho once a day, right? For six days, right? And he had the priest go, um, go forth and blow the trumpet as well. But he said, what? He said on the seventh day, I want you to come pass it seven times, Right? And let's read. Drop down to verse 16. Joshua 6 and 16. And it came to pass at the seventh time when the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord had given you the city, and the city shall be accursed, even it, and all that are therein to the Lord. Only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all that are that are with her in her house, because she did um, hide the messengers, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, in any wise, keep yourselves from the accursed thing, lest you make yourselves accursed. And when you uh, take a so like, and when you take the accursed thing, and make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it, it's so like, and when you take the accursed thing and make the camp of Israel um, a curse and trouble it, but all the silver and, and gold and the vessels of brass and iron are consecrated unto the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. Right. So when the Lord said, "Look, when you go into the city, right." All the silver and the gold that goes into the treasure of the house of the Lord, but don't take any accursed thing because the Lord cursed that place, right? So let's see what happens. Um, if they if they listen, let's continue to read on, right? Um, it says, and it came to pass when the people heard the sound of the trumpet that the people shouted with a great shout, and the, and the wall fell down flat. So the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep, and ass with the edge of the sword. So they killed everybody within, right? Just drop down in chapter 7 and verse 1. And it reads, 
but the children of Israel committed a trespass in their cursed thing, right? So you have one that didn't receive the, 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 the instruction of the Lord, right? He heard it, but he didn't receive it, right? He didn't want to listen, right? And let's see what happened. It says, but the children of Israel committed a trespass in their cursed thing. For Akan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, took the cursed thing. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. So Akan, he had took one of the cursed things that the Lord commanded us not to take. He didn't want to listen to the instruction that the Lord put forth. Right? Reading on, verse 2. And Joshua sent men um, from Jericho to um, Ai, which is beside beth Aven, on the east side of Bethel, and spake unto them, saying, Go up and view the country. And the men went up and viewed Ai. And they returned to Joshua and said unto him, Let not all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and smite Ai and make not all the people labor thither, for they are but few. Right? So they went and they was going to go and, and fight against these men and, and Ai. Right? Which I believe was the Amorites. Right? It's going to tell us as we continue to read. Right? Verse 4. So there went up thither of the people three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. And the men of Ai smote them about 30 and 6 men. So when they went up to fight against these men, right, the men of Ai, meaning these Amorites, they smote 36 men of the, of the Israelites, of our people, right? And let's see why that happened. For they chased them from before the gate, even into uh, Sherab, Shabarim, and smote them in the going down, whereof the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Meaning they got, they got fearful and they got afraid because they seen that they were losing the battle. Right, and these Amorites, our enemies, were prevailing. Verse 6 And Joshua rent his clothes and fell to the earth upon his face before the ark of the Lord. Until the eventide, he and his elders of Israel and put dust upon their heads. Right, so Joshua, you know, he, he ran his clothes, right? He's crying out to the Lord. He's, he doesn't know why they're losing the battle. Right? And Joshua said, o, o, Alas, O Lord, God, wherefore hast thou. At all brought this people over Jordan to deliver them into the hand of the Amorites to destroy us. Would to God we have been content and dwelt on the other side of Jordan. O Lord, what shall I say when Israel turneth their backs before their enemies? For the Canaanites, um, so like for the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land shall hear of it and shall um and shall environ us around and cut us off. So I can cut off our name from the earth, and what will we what will we do unto thy great name? What will thou do unto thy great name? So like you, verse 10. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Get thee up, wherefore liest thou upon thy face? Israel hath sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant on which I commanded them. So the Lord told them, Look, get up. Um get up from off your face. You know, Israel sinned against me, and they did something that I commanded them not to do. Right? Um, for they have taken the accursed thing and also have stolen and dissembled also, and they have put it even amongst their own stuff. Right, so Israel has sinned. Meaning what? A con, he had took this accursed thing, which we're going to read about. It was a Babylonian garment, right? And he stole from the Lord because all the treasure and the gold was supposed to go into the treasury of the house of the Lord. And that's what he took also, right? Reading on. It says, verse 12, Therefore the children of Israel could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore, except you destroy the accursed thing from amongst you. Right? So the Lord said, Look, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna fight for you. I ain't gonna be with you when you go to war, except you be um you destroy the accursed thing which was taken. Right? When we went over and we uh destroyed the uh the inhabitants of the land of Jericho. Right? Um I'm going to jump over to verse 20. And it reads, And Akan answered Joshua and said, I indeed have sinned against um, against the Lord God of Israel. And thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them, meaning he desired them, he lusted after them, and he took them. Right? And took them, and behold, um, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and my silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran into the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. And they took them out of the midst of the tent, and brought them into Joshua. 
unto all the children of Israel and laid them out before the Lord. Right? So they went and they saw that Akan had took these things. They saw that Akan had took these things, right? And um, you know, they went to his tent and they found them. Reading on. Verse 24, and Joshua and all Israel with him. So like in Joshua and all Israel um, with him took a con, the son of Zerah, and the silver and the garment and the wedge of gold and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his asses and his sheep and his tent and all that he had. And they brought them into the valley of Accor. Right. So they, they took they went and received the things that he took. Right. And they took him and his family. Right. His daughters and everybody. And let's see what happened to him for not receiving the instruction of the Lord. And Joshua said. Why hast thou troubled us? The Lord shall trouble thee this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones and burned them with fire. After they had stoned them with stones. And they raised so like it, over him a great heap of stones until this day. So that the Lord turned from, from the fierceness of his anger. Wherefore the name of the place was called the Valley of Accor until this day. Right, so Khan got himself killed. Not just himself but also his family because he didn't want to listen to the Heavenly Father. Right, so that's one example of someone who didn't receive instruction of the Lord, and we saw what it got him. Right, let's get the book of Jonah. Right, let's see what happened to Jonah. Right, for um, not receiving the instruction of the Lord when the Lord commanded him to do something. Right, let's get the book of Jonah, chapter one. Um, we're going to read verse one, and it reads. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. Right? So the Lord told Jonah to go up to Nineveh, right, and to cry out against it, right? To go prophesy against it. You see what Jonah did. But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. So Jonah got up out of there. He tried to run from the Lord, right? He didn't receive instruction. He didn't want to go do what the Lord instructed him to do. Right, it says, and went down to Joppa, and he found a ship going to Tarshish, so he uh, paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that there was a ship, so like it, so that the ship was like to be broken. Right, so as he got onto this ship, like the Lord caused a stirred up the waters, right. To where it was very rapid right and it almost broke the boat right and the lord did this because jonah right didn't receive instruction he tried to flee right we didn't know then the mariners were afraid and cried every man into his god and cast forth the um wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them but jonah was going down into the side of the ship and he lay and was fall asleep was well, like it was fast asleep, right? So the men of the boat, they started to throw out, you know, food and all type of stuff that they had because they was afraid the boat was going to either tip. So they start to just, you know, throw these things out. And Jonah, you know, the whole time is, you know, fell asleep on, on, on the ship. Read it all. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come and let us cast lots. It's so like in verse six. So the shipmaster came... To him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise and call upon thy God. If so be that God would think upon us that we perish not. And they said every one to his fellow, Come and let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots and the lots fell upon Jonah. Right? Verse 8. Then they said unto him, Tell us, we pray thee, for whose cause this evil is upon us. What is thy occupation, and, and from whence comest thou? What is thy country, and of what people are thou? And he said, I am in Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which have made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were exceedingly afraid, and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For, for the men knew that, that, that he fled from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. You see that? I'm going to drop down to verse... Uh, 15. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea, and the sea ceased from raging. Then the men uh, feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. 
Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights. Right? So Jonah, for not receiving instruction and listening and hearkening to the Heavenly Father, that he was cast into that sea and swallowed up by a great fish for three days and three nights. All right? Let's get another example. Let's get the book of um, Exodus 34 and 11. Right? Dealing with King Solomon. Right? Solomon, was, you know, he was a great and wise king. Right? But he also didn't receive counsel of the Lord. Because the Lord gave us instruction of not marrying, uh, you know, these heathens, right? People outside of our nation. And Solomon did these things, and it caused him to fall. All right, let's get Exodus chapter 34 and verse 11. And it reads. Matter of fact, let me get, um. Let me get, um. I was going to get Exodus 34 and 11. But let's get, let's get to the point. Let's get 1 Kings. First Kings chapter 11, right, in verse 1, and it reads, But King Solomon loved many strange women, to, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, the Ammonites, the Edomites, Sidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in unto them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they would turn away your heart after their God. Solomon claimed to these in love, right? So the Lord commanded us not to deal with these other nations, right? But Solomon fell in love with many of these other nations that the Lord said not to deal with, right? Um, reading on, verse 3. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines, And his wives turned away his heart, right? So just as the Lord said, as he married these other nations, his wives caused his heart to turn away from the Lord. And he began to set up high places for, you know, his wives and began to go off. Verse 4, For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord, and went not fully after the Lord, as did David his father. Then this, um, Solomon built up in high place for Chemosh, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Molech, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, um, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which appeared unto him twice. Right. So the Lord got angry because Solomon was building up these high places right in Jerusalem right for his wives after the Lord told him not to deal with these women because they was going to turn his heart away and it happened just as the lord said all right um verse 9 no i mean verse 10 and um and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods but he kept not that which the lord commanded wherefore the lord said um unto him, uh, solomon for as much as this is done to thee of thee and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes which i commanded thee I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and I will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days, I will not do it. For David thy father's sake, but I will rend the hand, I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. You see that? So because Solomon didn't receive instruction and he went off and still married these other heathens, right? The Lord rent the kingdom from him, right? Which caused the split of the kingdom, right? The southern and the northern. Right? And the Lord uh, 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 gave the tribes, ten of those tribes, right? To uh, Jeroboam, right? Solomon's servant. Right. And that's what happened because he didn't re receive instruction because he committed a sin um, against the heavenly father. Right. This is um, Nehemiah chapter 13 and verse 23. In those days also I saw Jews that had married wives of Ashdod, Ammon and Moab. And their children spake half in the speech of Ashdod, but cannot speak in the Jews language. But according to the language of each people. Right. Um. And I contended with them and cursed them and smote certain of them and plucked off their hair and made them swear by God, saying, Ye shall not go, so like ye shall not give your daughters unto their sons, nor take their daughters unto your sons, or for your sons. So like, or for yourselves. Verse 26. Did not Solomon, king of Israel, sin by these things? Right? So Solomon committed a sin by those things. Right? Yet among many nations was there no king like him, who was beloved of his God. And God made him king over all Israel. Nevertheless, 
even him did outlandish woman cause to sin you see that and he went off because he didn't listen to the to the heavenly father didn't receive that instruction and it caused him to uh the lord to split the kingdom rent the kingdom from him right and he committed a sin against the heavenly father right so we got to be wise in that all right let's get another example right of someone who didn't receive the instruction of the heavenly father all right let's get exodus chapter 20 and verse 8 exodus 20 and 8 real quick exodus 20 and 8 and the lord said Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. All right? Let's get on. Um, let's get on. Um, let me keep reading. I'm going to pull another scripture. Verse 11, for in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Right? So the Lord commanded our people right, to keep the Sabbath day holy right? and not to work on that day. We know we can't buy, sell, right? we can't cook, right? can't do your own pleasures, but you got to keep that, that day holy, meaning set apart into the Heavenly Father. Right? It's a rest day or right? you go forth and do the works of the Lord. Right, so the Lord commanded us this thing, and we had a blood covenant with the Heavenly Father that we made with Him, right? Um, through Moses, because the Lord uh, gave Moses, you know, the, the covenant to give unto us, and our people uh, 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 took that blood covenant, right? And you had a brother that um, broke it, right? So, Book of Exodus 24 and verse um, 1. And he said unto Moses, Come up unto the Lord, thou and Aaron and Adab and Abihu, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship ye afar off. And Moses alone shall come near the Lord, but they shall not come nigh, neither shall the people go up with him. And Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and the judgments, and all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words which the Lord hath said, we will do. And Moses wrote all the words. Of the Lord and rose up early in the morning and built an altar under the hill and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Right? Verse 6. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he sprinkled on the altar. And he took the book of the covenant and read it in the audience of the people. And they said, All that the Lord hath said we will do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood of and sprinkled it upon the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant which the Lord had made with you concerning all these words. Right? And one of those, one, you know, part of that covenant was keeping the Sabbath day holy. Right? But let's see what happened to a brother that didn't listen to the instruction that was given. Right? Let's get Numbers 15. In verse 32. And it reads, and while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Right, So you just had a brother that just received instruction, just partook in the blood covenant of the Heavenly Father and agreed to keep the Sabbath day holy. Right. And he knew he wasn't supposed to work on that day. Right. But yet he went out and started gathering sticks upon the Sabbath day. Let's see what happened. And they found him gathering sticks and brought him to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation. And they put him inward. Because it was not declared what should be done to him. And the Lord said unto, unto um, Moses, The man shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Verse 36. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. Right? So this brother got put to death because he didn't want to hearken to the instruction and the counsel of the Heavenly Father. After he just agreed unto it. And it caused him his life. Right, so it's highly important to re receive counsel and instruction of the Most High God. All right, let's get this last one, and then I'm gonna, I'm gonna end it. All right, let's get the Book of Numbers. Um, matter of fact, let's get the Book of uh, uh, Deuteronomy chapter. Uh, let me see. Let me. I'm gonna see if I'm gonna get numbers. So like you. Let me see if I'm going to get numbers real quick. So lock it real quick. Now, let me get the book of Deuteronomy. Let me get the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter uh, 3 and verse 23. Let me get the book of Deuteronomy chapter uh, 3 and verse 23. 
And it reads, um, And I besought the Lord at that time, saying, O Lord, thou, thou hast begun to show thy servant thy greatness, thy might. For what God is there in heaven or on earth that can do all these things according to thy works and according to thy might? I pray thee, let me go over and see the good land that is beyond Jordan, that goodly mountain of Lebanon. But the Lord was wroth with me for your sakes and would not hear me. And the Lord said unto me, let it suffice thee and speak no more unto me of this matter. Get thee up to the top of Pisgah and lift up thy eyes, eyes westward and northward and southward and eastward and behold it with thine eyes. For thou shalt not go over um, this Jordan. All right. So Moses right didn't make it into the promised land because he disobeyed um the word of the heavenly father which the lord commanded him right when our people was complaining within the wilderness right um you know about water and food and, and things of that nature right the first time the lord told moses to smite the rock right to bring water forth out of the rock and moses did so he listened but the second time when our people continue um um to complain against the heavenly father um for water and things of that na uh, nature uh, Moses didn't listen and what he did was he ended up smiting that he ended up uh, uh, the Lord told Moses to speak into the rock and he didn't he didn't speak into the rock instead he hit the rock twice and therefore he didn't make it into the kingdom uh, he didn't make it into the promised land at that time right and that's what happened when because he didn't receive instruction of the Most High God right but Lord willing man this video is edifying so at least one brother or sister to the next video Shalom